we've got a lot of game, midweek games, not a lot of them with uh, a lot of national uh, excitement, and this is one of them. But I think we see some value here. We, how often do we see teams that are not used to being a sizable favorite, and they come out and just don't know how to how to win in that uh, environment? And this is something that we saw this last Saturday, and we'll see it again hopefully on Tuesday. Is Louisiana Tech has two victories on the season. They beat FCS Nickel State 25 to 17. And then their other win last week against Middle Tennessee State 48 to 21. Not a very good uh, Middle Tennessee State team. And both of those games were at home. If you take a look at what they've done on the road at NC State, they scored 20. And they also went to Florida International and lost that game, scoring just 10 points. Uh, Louisiana Tech can't run the football. This is one of the worst running teams in uh, college football. They're only allowing, or excuse me, making 3.3 yards per carry against questionable competition. So it's hard to back them in that regard, especially in the first half when you're just trying to go through and stick to your game plan in that regard. So I just can't see this club putting up enough points on the road to cover this number. The current number is six with New Mexico State playing as the underdog at plus six. Uh, they're not a good football team, but they are better in what this line suggests. Uh, they got bombed last week, 54-13 to at Jacksonville State. So nobody is going to want any part of this 1-5 squad here. And you know me, I love those dogs that nobody else wants. And that's exactly why I think we have value here on this unwanted home underdog. The weakness for the Aggies is in the passing game. Uh, the other team has just been smoking them in the passing game. That makes them vulnerable in, with deficits in the second half. They're not able to come back because they don't pass the ball very well, and the other teams do. Uh, this is why we think the host is very good in the first half here. I don't want it for the full game because if it gets out of hand, they don't have a way to come back on them. And so we'll play them in the first half. We'll play the better running team in the first half at plus six playing at home. So – we all over the years develop quote unquote rules. The first book, uh, what we like to do and what we don't like to do. And one of my rules, it goes for college sports, not because you can make money betting bad teams in the NBA sometimes. You can make money betting bad teams in the NFL sometimes. But in college football, I really try hard not to put my money on bad teams. New Mexico State's a bad team. All right. Uh, you talked about that they're, uh, they can't uh, throw the football. Well, uh, if you say what their weakness is, they gave up 54 to Jacksonville State, 50 to New Mexico in their last home game, 48 to Fresno. I'd say their weakness is on the defensive side of the football. Um, here's a bad team with a bad defense. Really? Well, you've got to pick a game, and the line is six for a reason. Uh, this is early in the week, and this was the best thing I could put out at this time. Will this be a play <laughs> for my clients? No, no. This is not a play for my clients. Uh, I guess I only had one NFL game yesterday and only had a couple of college football last week. I'm not going to give this out for clients, but I've seen enough of these teams like Louisiana Tech here that should not be laying this type of number, and I want to get on that. I, I want to play bad teams off a real bad performance where nobody wants them. I got that here with the Aggies, and that's what we're going to use here for New Mexico State in the first half. And if it makes you feel better, there are some six and a halves out there also. But uh, yeah, we don't have that key number of seven quite yet, so we'll see. But but uh, you know, a lot of books don't have the first half line, so this is uh, six six right. and a half in a couple spots, ten and a half for the game. Public could bump it to seven, probably not likely, but something to keep an eye on. Brian Leonard, hockey, football, a little baseball remaining, basketball around the corner. What else you got going on at WagerTalk.com? Yeah, the hockey game I gave you, Florida. That's my only play for clients today. I do have a team total in the Monday Night Football game. Unlike a lot of guys who put out Monday Night Football plays every single week, I don't do that. Uh, I've got to have something special for that, and I do, do think we have a nice team total there. But there is baseball playoff action, and I've got a big 5% play going in Major League Baseball today. 5% in baseball and hockey have been great over the years. In fact, number one on the website in the career in NHL net profit, also in Major League Baseball net profit. I know that Tokyo Brandon does other other, uh, you know, Korean and, and Japanese baseball and basketball. So he's fantastic in it. But in Major League Baseball, uh, Johnny it's Johnny in Detroit says I'm number one in the history in that profit there. So we got a big 5% going in playoff baseball today. And uh, save some money and grab that right now. And uh, you won't have to buy the uh, Florida play because you already got it. 